Welcome back. Our first conversation has to do with the directive by the president that uh, crude oil should be sold to Dangote Refinery and others in Naira. Uh, it's a major move, which is why we brought in the experts to help us make sense of what this means to the sector. We've been joining the program right here in our Lagos studio by Mr. Martin Donovo. He's an energy expert. Mr. Donovo, thank you so much for coming on the program. Thank you very much. So, you're allowed to break as many tables as possible because uh, the NNPCL, uh, there are so many questions to ask when it comes to that. But let's, let's look at the entire sector, beginning with what the president has done. Uh, we know that the PIA provides for payment in both Naira and Dollar, uh, Section 109, Subsection 4C, uh, at the end of the day. Um, so h help us to understand, is this a good thing? Are we in the right direction? The reason is... On one hand, we're looking for F uh, foreign exchange or dollar. On the other hand, we're also trying to sell oil in Naira, maybe to you know put, strengthen the, the Naira at the end of the day. So help us make sense of the economics of selling crude oil in Naira rather than dollar. Well, I, I think it's not a, a major issue. It's, it's the right thing to do. It's a local transaction national currency is Naira. It's a Nigerian product. You're selling in Nigeria, the writing is Naira. It, should, it shouldn't be a major decision. This, this should be routine. The writing should be Naira because the crude oil is local, produced here. The, the refinery is local, produced here. Uh -huh. So this, this should not be an issue, but why, why is it an issue? because there is uh, uncertainty about the Naira and the convertibility of the Naira. And you're also going to deepen that uncertainty if you don't sell in Naira. And that means repressing your own currency, which represents your ec economy. So it doesn't make any sense not selling in Naira. If you're selling to a refinery in Belgium, excellent, you're selling foreign. But if you're selling to a refinery in Nigeria, you should sell in dollars. But you know, all this fear arises because of the fluctuations of exchange rates. But you, you just find a means to, 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 to manage that. It's, it's, it, it shouldn't be a major is this, is this a unique model? Is this what's obtainable in other climes? Oh, yes. Or, and, and this or, is what so the law says. Why have, why have we been doing it the way we've been doing it at the end of the day? Well, you know, this is like new. Okay. That's the fact. It's like new because previously it was government to government. NMPC owns the crude, NMPC owns the refineries. Now, this is owned by Dangote Group. So it's no longer government to government because government owns own NMPC, government owns NMPC. NMPC owns crude, NMPC owns refineries. So it's, 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 it's between me and myself. But this is a different entity now. The Dangote Group owns the refinery, so it's no longer an NMPC refinery. Where NMPC takes its own crude, refines, and sells at Does whatever. Does NMPC refine crude in Nigeria? NMPC has four refineries. If they are not working, it's yeah. a different thing. Yeah, because that's the next question I wanted to ask. No, if they're not working, it's a different thing. And we cannot, and we should not be surprised they're not working because we cannot do the wrong things and get the right answers. So, you, the, so the crude that we are here allegedly are located to NMPCL at discounted prices, uh, maybe by 25%, selling it at, say, $60 as against the open market prices. That crude, what happens to it? And if it's, sold, if it's sold by a third party, the differentials, who takes it? No, I, I think you're making a mistake. Okay. Uh, I think you're making a mistake. Uh, That's what I say, alleged. NMPC is a government entity. Okay. That's number one. So it's owned by you and I. We own it. You own it. Maybe you don't know you own it. But I, do, you own I do. It. Uh, Even I, if it I, has been privatized. I know. Well, it's not privatized yet. Right now, the NMPC Limited has two owners, Federal Ministry of Finance, Finance. and Federal Ministry of Petroleum. Incorporated. We incorporated. own those ones. Forget who incorporated and owned by who? Owned by you and I. Whether you incorporate it, you don't incorporate it. When it was not no, incorporated, just a separate it's owned by the ministry. Exactly. Just to know that that, that's uh, it. Yeah. He's right. That's why you incorporate it, so that it doesn't yeah, get mixed up with. Yeah. Yeah, but it's still owned by us. That's a fact. And that's why you see that it is still controlled by us. Who controls federal ministry? Yeah. Government. So, so it's, it's the same thing. It's very cosmetic. 
the reality is that we own it. It's, it's a public entity. We own federal ministry. So whether you remove federal ministry and put presidents, whoever you put, we own it because we own all those entities. So when NPC has crude, don't forget, typically in a PSC, production sharing contract, you share the oil into four different uh, quantities. Mm -hmm. Cost oil, which goes to the company that Export. is... Yes. yes. So cost oil, royalty oil, profit oil, and tax oil. Those are the four components in a PSC. So... In this case, government takes royalty oil. Government takes tax oil in a PSC, not in a JV. Because those are different yeah, I understand. regimes. Now, the company takes its cost oil and takes its profit oil. So who takes, when you say government takes, it's NMPC that takes, because it's NMPC that's the partner. So NMPC takes this oil, sells it, and gets foreign exchange. That's the revenue for NMPC. In this case, if NMPC refineries were working, NMPC takes its own crude, refines, and sells products. But now, you have a separate entity that's not owned by government, which is the Dangote Group. So you have to work out the transaction details, and that's why I say it's new. And it was convenient to say we sell in dollars. It was convenient, but it's not patriotic. So this is not a PSC. It's not a JV. This sale this now between NNPCL and Dangote. Yes. So it's just a completely different entity. And NMPC, when it was selling to Potaka Refinery, for example, it was selling to itself. When it's selling to Dangote, it's selling to a separate entity. So, and what it is used to is selling in the international market for dollar revenue. So, so my colleagues are going to call me. So help us clear the question I asked. Yes. I know you answered it, but it, you just mentioned it now. NMPC is selling to itself. Yes. I will need you to a better explainer on that because selling to itself means it's supposed to refine. Yes. But it's not refining. Yes. But is it true that when NPC sells to itself, it sells at discounted price? I want you to clear that first. Well, uh, NMPC is regulated, so I think that's, that's, that's what you don't want to accept. NMPC is owned by us. We control it. It's our product. You can't tell me how much quantity of my yam I should eat. No, I'm asking a fact-based fact question. Okay. So if you don't have facts, it's okay. Okay. I am asking again. Okay. When NMPC sells to itself, there is an international market price. Did you Open. listen to your grammar when you sell to yourself? No, hold on. That's hold what on. I'm saying. Yeah. When you are selling to yourself, it's, an it's my own. I'm it's selling a, to myself. It's an international product that has international market open price. That's correct. So when you sell to yourself, how much do we sell to ourselves? Is it 60 at discounted or we sell it at open market? It is That's what, my question. It is whatever government approves because okay. it, belongs to, it belongs to us. So speaking of approval now, and when LMP okay, sells to itself, what does he use it for? He uses it for refining. And at this current cost today, that's why they talk about uh, what what is the term they use? I will remember it and I will say it's what swap or what? No, what we call subsidy, what an MPC calls it, they call under recovery. Under recovery. Under recovery. Under recovery. Yeah. Uh -huh. So so that's it. If government says, okay, price of uh, petrol is six hundred naira. And you refine it, and it comes at 1,000. You have to sell it at 600. It belongs to us. So you have to understand that you can't be saying that they're selling to yourself, they are discounting. Where is the money? No. You, are, you use the grammar. You say, when it sells to itself, is that really a sale? I own something, and I say I sold it to myself. Uh, because right. if is it, it if, really a no, sale? The, the, okay. if you don't, so, the reason why that question continues, sorry, Bukola, is if we're not very clear, and not very open because anybody who is in charge of that purse can do anything they want with no, it. No, open, I agree, but don't forget these funds do not go to your account or my account. So all those reconciliations can be done. But when government dictates, because what is the purpose of government? The constitution is very clear. You and I cannot come and be disputing with our own opinions, the security and the welfare of the people. Now, if the welfare of the people is that we sell crude at, we sell petrol at 100 naira, that's what government should aim to do. All right. 
And then if uh, that means that NMPC has to get the crude from, from itself at a cheaper rate, what's wrong with that? So what you need to worry about is not that you're selling to yourself. You need to worry about the transparency you mentioned. Exactly. Mm. And the ethical integrity of the accounting. That's, that's what you need to worry about. Not, okay. not whether we sell to ourselves. It's, it's our property. So if um, uh, crude oil is being sold at $80 per barrel at the international market, it, what government determines that it will be sold in Naira equivalent here? Exactly. Okay. So um, help us understand the thinking of the federal government expressed through the chairman of FIRS when he says that in this case now, a Frexim Bank would be the uh, sort of um, broker between... Um, NNPCL and the local refiners. And I asked this question against the backdrop of the concern expressed earlier, you know, during that disagreement between the regulators and Dangote, uh, that perhaps um, because of the agreement between NNPCL and Afrexim Bank, uh, there was no crude oil left to sell after the IOCs have sold theirs and, you know, uh, NNPCL did not have adequate supply to sell to Dangote. So help us understand um, that, what's happening in that space. That's the next thing I was going to talk about, that it's, it's easy to say we we'll sell to Dangote in Naira. Do we even have to sell? So they, they have to give us exact numbers. Do we have adequate supply? Yes, to sell. Because, number one, I think that Dangote built an oversized refinery. Personal opinion. It's the first time I'm hearing that. I, I think he built an oversized refinery. Personal opinion. Uh, 650,000 barrels per day. The four we had is uh, total 445,000 barrels. And uh, uh, I forgot to do the arithmetic of 50 million liters per day to see how it, I, I can't do it now. I don't have a calculator here. To see whether or not he'll be able to cater to the needs of Nigeria. Yes, and uh, going from, without doing the arithmetic, going from previous or historical uh, uh, records, mm the 650 should be super sufficient for us because prior to now, mm. the 445 was super sufficient. Prior to now, maybe consumption has... Perhaps it wasn't increased. He's looking at the local market alone. So, oh, yes. Oh, oh, clearly. He said that from the beginning. Okay. He said that from the beginning. So, and right now, he's been exporting. So, and it may be more profitable for him to export. And that is why all these details need to be worked out because he can refuse to supply to you. So, you, yes, he will make a lot more profit in the international market than he will make in the local market because whether we like it or not, uh, as at today, as at today, because of the dysfunctionality of importing what we produce, PMS is heavily subsidized. Mm. As at today, because of the dysfunctionality of importing what we produce, South Africa has no crude oil. But they have refineries. All right. They import crude and they refine. refine. And they so. keep their people employed, they add value, and they save the cost of refining abroad. But we, 200 million mumu, yeah. we have crude. I'm not the one. Who, Labaja said it, so don't say who. Hmm. <laughs> no, you're not. You, no, I'm agreeing with Labaja. It's a, it's a breakfast show. Uh -huh. The children are watching, so we have no. to be careful. Let's well, so, so Labaja is in the public domain. <laughs> in fact, he, he has a record that is a, 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 what do people call it? Let's not lose sight of the conversation. Do we have crude to sell? And that's what I was saying. NMPC needs to give us the numbers because we know that it took, uh, first in the first instance, three point something billion dollars from Afrexim. Uh, there are reports that it took another 900 million dollars. Now, they call them oil banked loans. In other words, we won't pay you money. We will use oil to mm -hmm. service. Now, the details of those agreements I don't have. They need to tell us how much quantity they have committed to Afroexim. Well, uh, and the, then we'll know what is left. And Afroexim is not the only one. Well, the FIRS. They, they, they also uh, sold chairman, some other entities. Right. The FIRS chairman said that the FEC approved 450,000 barrels uh, meant for domestic consumption to be offered. Uh, to Nigerian refineries, and they're using Dangote refineries. Okay, you can as see that pilot. already. So already, that is already that is not sufficient barrels, for right. Dangote 650. Well, um, so so you can see there's a constraint there. If do if, if that number is that's correct, what domestic, no, that's, not that's just for what, Dangote. That's right? what he says. And for that's for domestic, not for Dangote. Port Harcourt will be. And saying that the whole total is not even enough for Dangote alone. So let's so let's. Um, 
pardon me. Um, yeah, go ahead. Okola. So I, I, there's the business of it. There's the economy of it. And, you know, a lot of people say, this is over my head. I don't play in that space. What I know is I want to go to the petrol station, be able to buy petrol at a cheaper price than what it is now, because it's been said that this is something God gave us. So if we're enjoying it, at least to some extent, it makes sense. And we want to ensure that we get supply consistently. So let's tie this to what Nigerians are going through right now. Endless queues, as I speak. Filling stations don't have petrol. Some are selling above 800. I saw a price yesterday for over 1,000 Naira right here in Nigeria. So what would this do uh, if it would do anything to first the price and the supply of petrol in Nigeria. And I think that is what a lot of Nigerians want to do. We can sell crude in even Kobo and announce all of that, but does that change what I spend on petrol and the supply I get? You know what I say, that as long as we do the wrong things, we're going to have the wrong answers. Each time they do the corruption perception index, we, we are on the top of corruption. And the level of mediocrity is mind-boggling. With that, you can't have efficiency. If you don't have efficiency, you're going to pay, whether you like it or not. You're not God. God created this world. The rules operate, whether you like it or not. And the principal rule is that you reap what you sow. So if you sow corruption and mediocrity, you're going to get a very high level of inefficiency, and that's, that's expensive. <laughs> so come to your question. The first thing is that we need clear numbers. And we need numbers that are correct and validated. Is it for our consumption? Is it for the... For all! For all! Otherwise, you can't do the arithmetic. So for... Which number are you going to use? The same government that told you 90 million uh, liters a day is telling you 50 million liters a day. And, and all this nonsense so isn't, isn't it so, embarrassing that we have the NNDPRA, NUPROC, let's even leave NUPROC, and we don't have numbers? Well, I think it's because government does not want to give numbers. The, the, the system can give you numbers. I'm a part of the system. The system can give numbers. And that's, and that's what happens. When, when you have corruption, everything becomes obscured. Because you have to conceal the corruption. And in order to conceal the corruption, you have to change the numbers. Speaking of obscurity, if the uh, Federal Executive Council is not asking the right questions and is saying that, you know, um, Afrexin Bank should be the middleman in between this seal, is this sort of saying that Afrexin Bank should hold on on what we are owing it in terms of crude oil and let the crude oil be sold to um, Dangote and other local refiners? And if Afrexin Bank does not agree, um, that's like a lack of commitment to the NNPC, uh, to uh, the local Local refiners and we're not moving anywhere. No, I, I wouldn't say that. I think that the African Bank, the, this, these transactions require banking. So I think the African Bank, they called it, I think, lead arranger. So it's supposed to re, 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 arrange all the banking because this, these are banking transactions. Uh, uh, invoice payments, these are, these are banking transactions. That's, that's the way I see it. I'm not a part of the, I mean, I'm not even sure the agreement is in place because this approval has just been secured. So they're going to work out the agreement. But the way that I understand it is that Afroexim will oversee the banking transactions, mm. payments, invoicing, all that. that. That's the way I see it. I'm not sure. I'm not, I'm not the authority to talk on that. Government has to tell us those details so when, I, I, when they are worked out, because I don't think they have been worked out yet. It's a new decision. Even, even though we don't have enough to sell. And that's what I wanted to address. Because if you manage our refineries right now, are undergoing maintenance, assume we get them back. You have 445,000 barrels per day capacity. You add to 650. You're talking 1.1 million. Total production right now is like 1.4. So you see that there's only 200 that you can export as raw crude, which is good for us. No, let's do the math but again. Let's do the math again. 445,000. Yes. Is our local public domestic refining capacity. Right. Four refineries, 400. But they say that 450,000 will be the one that they will sell. 445, 450 yeah, is the same exactly. thing. Now. So we have so. plus 500,000 left. In fact, almost a million left. If we're looking at 1.4 million barrels per day. No, that's what I'm saying now. I'm saying total domestic refining capacity. Let, let's relieve the small refineries. Yeah. Let's count Public and Dangote. Mm -hmm. Public and Dangote are 650 
plus 445. Okay. That's over 1 million. That's 1.1 million. No, they're not trying to cater to that need. They said this 450 that they will give. So they will share it across board. So let's focus on what we have left. Hold on. Tomorrow you ask me why is Dangote still important. Shebi, they don't give up. Wait, wait, wait. No, wait, 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 wait. No, I know. If out of the 450, you give Dangote 300. Exactly. And he's able to get his capacity to, to he has to import. Of course. And That's then you see, it messes up the economics. Oh. Yes, now because the cost of, in, right cost of importation is additional. But it's getting WTI, which is not as expensive, I imagine. Well, uh, you can say it's getting a WTI. When you get WTI, you will either get less uh, PMS or you will have, have to crack. So, so, so and those are additional be, operational more costs. costly. Uh, so that those are more additional costs. It's just like this sulfur they're talking about. If you have a uh, crude with high sulfur, then you have to do sulfur treating. So are you speaking as a petroleum engineer or as an economist? Because some will say You must speak as both. It's important. All of us are trained in engineering economics. Of, of course. So it's important <laughs> to balance the act. As much as you want to cater to um, your domestic need, there's also the need to get forex, whether or not you like it. No, you, you need to The show right way to get forex. Foreign exchange. The right way reserve. to get forex. Hmm? The right way to get forex in this situation is to sell refined products. So That's the right way. To sell refined products instead of selling crude. So who, who are you buying from? In the West Coast, yeah, there is a heavy that's demand. The point. So you're, I'm coming, I'm coming. Are you in selling the, to the people you, you're buying from? Who is going to, who are no, you selling no, to? No, 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 no. Where you have a local You're buying from you. Belgium, Malta, UK, US. That's so where are you're you buying from. Hold on, hold on. I'm saying that in the West Coast here, yeah, the West African coast, right. there is heavy demand. You have not even saturated this region, the West African coast. We can sell products in the West African coast. So what will make the country even richer? If we were a productive people and not a corrupt and a mediocre and celebrating our mediocrity, in fact, we are very proud of our mediocrity and we advertise it. What will make the country richer is if we sell refined product instead of selling raw crude. Mm. That's a premium. And also that keeps your people employed. That also uh, triggers the associated activities in the economy. The people who support refinery operations. So that's, you, you don't count only the, the, the employment of the refinery. The support organizations also uh, well, get So, so let's, let's assume is, that um, this is well-intentioned and it sails through. Will it impact significantly on um, domestic consumption needs and on pricing, which is a major concern of Nigerians? Oh, definitely now. De definitely. Why is this pricing very prohibitive? Because it is dysfunctional. You are importing. Please now, there's a cost to exporting crude. There's a cost to it. The ship is not free now. Insurance is not free. You have a management organization overseeing all that. So there's a cost to exporting. Now, when you export the crude, there's a cost to importing freight, for example. Everything you buy, freight cost. So there's a cost to importing the product. Now, you don't need to export the crude anymore. You don't need to import the crude. So you save that cost. So it's very clear. This is what you need to do. You need to refine all the people you're importing right. from are people who have refined their own. You, you have the crude, you have the refineries. So, okay. Uh, you are not refining. Well, well, how do you call that? Well, that's much you can take. It's an ongoing conversation. At the end of the day, I'm sure you're pushing for uh, added value and all of that. Well, that's, that's what you need. Uh, rather than just the exporting crude. But there's a lot to talk about with the NNPCL and all of that. Uh, but let's see how this plays out eventually. Mr. Martin Onovo is an energy expert. Thank you so much, sir, for coming on the program. Thank you we very much. It. Thank you so much. Thank you, sir. We've got a quick break. When we come back, it's time to look at other things in the polity, especially the planned nationwide protest. Join us again.